gotta love the Pillsbury Dough Boy. You just poke him in the stomach. Even if you just give him a little tickle, he'll start laughing and giggling, you know. <laughs> I mean, he'll tickle so hard that he'll f literally shit himself. He'll shit out a fucking gumdrop or a Hershey Kiss if you tickle him so hard. That's what's great about the Pillsbury Dough Boy. It's not only his products are great, but the little mascot, he's cute, he's fluffy, and you just want you to poke him in the little stomach, you know, you just want to poke him right there until he pokes out that little gum drop, you know? He's, uh, he's, uh, he's fucking adorable. But the two best products that I love from the Pillsbury Dough Boy is the cinnamon buns and, obviously, the flaky layered biscuits. Once they're all night, nice golden brown, you raise them up and you pull those sons of bitches out of the oven. You just take your butter, your margarine, you just slap it all on there and you just take that bite. It is just absolute heaven. Everybody loves a good buttermilk biscuit. You can have it for Thanksgiving, Christmas, uh, breakfast with some uh, white gravy from like sausages or whatever. Or you can just, you know, eat, make up buttermilk biscuits and just have them just for the hell of it. Because that's how good they are. But, when it comes to the world of horse racing, you look at a lot of infamous horses out there. Now, I'll give you the 13 Triple Crown winners from history in this particular sport. Now, I admit, I'm not a horse racing guy. I don't go watch it re regularly. I don't know the history. I don't follow it. There is a horse racing track from where I live that I can go and do some gambling for like penny change or whatever. Bet a dollar and you get like 20 bucks if your horse wins or whatever. Or you can bet higher. But I might even go to a horse racing track one of these days to see the local competition and bet a couple dollars and hopefully win out, win with something to go out and buy myself a fucking McDonald's Happy Meal or something with the money I want from the horse racing. But I digress here. So, as for those 13 winners in the world of horse racing competition, that like I, like I mentioned, there has been only 13 winners in the history of this particular sport that was able to win all three of the Grand Slam particular races in the world of horse racing. Now, I can't necessarily remember the other two, but all I know is that the number one that stands out the most is obviously the Kentucky Derby. Everybody knows this particular race. Everyone sits in front of their TV to watch this race. Uh, everyone in uh, Louis, uh, Louisville, Kentucky, dresses up nicely, wears nice clothing, fancy hats. They show little, little flower parades and all the nonsense, and they just go out and have a good time. And all the fucking millionaires just try and win a shitload of money from a particular horse. Now, as for the 13 horses that won, you had Sir Barton, Gallant Fox, Omaha, War Admiral, Whirl Away. Count Fleet, Assault, Citation, Secret, Secretariat, Terrate, Secret Terrate, I don't know, Se Seattle Slough, Affirmed, American Pharaoh, and Justify. These 13 horses here are the ones that won the Grand Slam with it becoming a Triple Crown winner in all three of the major horse racings. Now, sir, sh sure, those are maybe the horses that are some of the biggest and well-known out there in this particular sport. But when you want to talk about a particular horse that was green as green can be, that was basically an unknown, and then once it was trained properly, took the time and effort to turn this horse from a, no from a nobody into a somebody to become an inspiration and loved by everybody, Seabiscuit is practically one of the biggest horses out there that you can think of. Now, his resume alone is something else. Throughout the mid to late 1930s, to beating the 1937 Triple Crown winner, War Admiral, uh, becoming the Horse of the Year in 1938, and was trained properly and loved by everybody for the sheer stamina, suspense that this horse was able to bring, and all the care justified, no pun intended to one of the horses, that was able to bring is truly something spectacular. Now... There was a movie that was based off quite a few films that was made from the, based off of Sea Biscuit. Now, one of them is this one right here, the 2003 movie. During the Great Depression, Charles S. Howard, played by Jeff Bridges, is in mourning after a sudden tragic loss in his family. A young man named John Red Pollard, played by Tobey Maguire, and Tom Smith, Chris Cooper, cooperate in order to take Sea Biscuit, a tempered, scared horse, and turn him into one of the greatest 
horse racers in existence in this particular foundation. Going in this movie, I have not really seen this particular film in such a long time, so it was obviously a blank to me. But going back, sitting down and watches with a little glass of wine and just admired by this movie. The intro goes into a nice summary synops synopsis of the Great Depression within the 1930s. It's amazing how the story showcased how young Jeff Bridges looked in the film, but the background of Charles S. Howard going into a nice little background in-depth detail of who he was, what his family was, and how he got into the foundation of Into the World of Horse Racing. Now, you had a wonderful cast of people in this movie. You had William H. Macy, Gary Stevens, Chris Cooper, uh, Jeff Bridges, Elizabeth Banks, Tobey Maguire, all of them played a particular role in this film that was just absolutely fantastic. Now, Tobey Maguire, he was the major standout in this movie for me. His will, determination, suspense, a lot of maturity that he was able to grow in the film alone since he became such an important horseback rider for Seabiscuit. The connection alone grown of turning the horse into a fine rider. Now, the thing is, is that when it comes to Tobey Maguire, people only know this guy for playing as Peter Parker in Spider-Man. Well, not me. I believe this was his best role in film. Now, the thing is, is that Maguire proved that he can portray a serious role in heart-wrenching movies like this. He can, give, he can be given parts where his character is believable and you grow a care for. Last time I actually saw him in a role like this was not only this film, but where he was actually a supporting role in the remake of The Great Gatsby that came out, what was it, 2013? I don't remember the fucking year. thing is, is that when it comes, and this is something that aggravates me, when it comes to particular roles, male or female, when they do a specific role, they only get known for said role, become like a one-hit wonder. But the thing is, is that when they go on either doing movies before this particular role or afterwards, it ends up becoming the best role that they've ever done in movies. I'll give you an example. Look at Matthew Broderick. I loved him in Ferris Bueller's Day Off. He was fucking fan phenomenal. One of my favorite movies of all time. But when I look at Matthew Broderick, I look at his best roles for films like War Games. And honestly, his best role was in Glory. But when it comes to Tony McGuire, people, other folks see him for, for Spider-Man. I look at him for Seabiscuit. So continuing on, his role in this film was just absolutely superb. Now, as for the whole story alone, there was a lot of suspense. When it came time to the actual build-up to where once you learn about um, Charles Howard's family and how he got into business, and once you saw how Tobey Maguire's character, how J John Red Polar, learning about his background, his story of how he was in horseback riding, and his history of injuries, of how that was able to partake in this particular film, and how he was able to grow his respect with Seabiscuit is just was a developmental process and a study alone, which was something very fascinating to me. See, the thing is, is that this was a study that was done right really well, is where you take the important key factors of two particular characters, with an animal and a human being, and grow in the connection. It was just a developmental process. It was baby steps at a time and a slow build from there. And I absolutely was admired by how that was able to take place. It was a study alone that was growing. And the thing is, is that I really loved is that they were able to take the key foundations of Seabiscuit's uh, timeline of how he started to his first race, the struggles, and building up to his most prominent race that he was able to do, and the resume that the horse was able to br br build was just incredible, and the in-depth analysis that was transpiring throughout the movie was great. It was just little steps at a time and a lovely process building up into giving you all that insight look of what this horse is, of who this horse was, what the resume was, and even, again, giving you all the resume of John Pollard. It's absolutely phenomenal. This whole film was just a big character study in a very, very good way. Not just learning about the historical backgrounds of the particular horse, but of the rider, the owner, the trainer, whomever. 
it was a big study for of everybody equally and even a little romance factor where how Elizabeth Banks came in with how her character was portrayed. I didn't really focus much on that, though. I mean, her role was all right. It wasn't really up to par or anything that I necessarily legitimately cared about as I was more focused on the main projective. Now, as for what I can say for my negatives for this particular film, the movie didn't get interesting within the remaining of the first act. After the introduction to Charles Howard and how Jeff Bridges played him was just fantastic, the film lost me throughout the rest of the first act, and I just didn't really care. But once you saw the connection between how Tobey Maguire his character was met up with the horse and how their little connection sparked off at first. That's where the film picked up for me and I was really getting my interest. Little by little. And it was a very investing watch. So overall, for someone who doesn't watch horse racing or doesn't follow it properly, and to check this movie out once again to get a refresher of what this film was about and relearning that Tobey Maguire can really give a phenomenal performance. Jeff Bridges being a fantastic role that he was. Uh, William H. Macy playing as the radio broadcaster was really good. So you had a lot of basic supporting roles going on that were decent and watchable. The whole entire film was just a very fantastic character study. Watching this little timeline built up with the horse himself, starting him off and becoming one of the most inspirational horses in this particular sport. It was just fascinating to watch and really showcases the true talent that this horse had. So, with that being said about the movie, I actually give it a 3.75 out of 5. It's a nice little movie. Nice to check out every so often when you want to sit down and watch something. Or if you're a big fan of horse racing, give this movie a watch. So, with that being said, folks, uh, that is going to have to do with my thoughts about Seabiscuit. Uh, if you've seen the movie, let me know down below what your thoughts about the film. If you haven't seen it, again, check it out. And uh, with that being said, ciao for now.